Welcome to three basic accessibility tools in Google. My name is Scott Dougherty. I am an assistive technology consultant for the Allegheny Intermediate Unit in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. If you have questions about any of the topics covered in this recording today, please feel free to drop me a line via email or my Twitter handle. Also take note that the slide deck and additional documentation is available at the bit.ly site shown on screen there. Once you arrive at that shared Google Drive, look for the additional resources and webinars folder to find today's handouts. We're going to be discussing the top three ways to increase accessibility of instructional materials for students. Certainly these aren't limited to Google, although that's the focus today. These three accessibility features are actually built into a number of products available on the market today as part of the manufacturer's universal design to make them as accessible as possible to a variety of users. One of the major ways that we can increase accessibility of documents is to give text-to-speech access. Using an electronic version of material and text-to-speech features, a user could listen to the contents of the screen read aloud with a computerized voice. Another feature that's very useful is speech-to-text or speech recognition, where the user is able to dictate into a word processor and have the keystrokes generated by voice rather than by typing. And then finally today we'll be taking a look at some alternatives to the pencil, including some keyboard shortcuts for utilizing abbreviations and we'll also briefly touch upon annotation tools to work with PDF documents. In the Chrome OS for users utilizing Chromebooks, text-to-speech is actually built into the system. While I don't have a video to show today, this screen will walk you through the steps to activate the Select to Speak feature in Google Chrome OS. In the bottom right hand corner of the operating system on the shelf, that gray area down below, is a little icon with a clock in it. When you click on that, this display panel of the system menu displays. And the first thing you want to do is click on the little settings cog there to get into the operating system settings. That's going to launch a panel mid-screen that I, I've positioned here over on the left. So you'll see settings for the Chromebook displayed here in a table. In order to access the speech features, we need to scroll all the way down to the bottom of that list and click Advanced. Once you do that, the settings window will redraw itself and add additional features that weren't in there on the initial scroll. Go ahead and scroll down to the Accessibility feature, and you'll be given two options. The first is to always show accessibility options in the system menu. And that's turned off by default, but I click this little toggle button to turn it on. What that does is it adds this accessibility icon group to your system menu. So you could click by the clock and immediately have access to your accessibility features. It just cuts out some of these additional steps. The second thing we want to do to activate text-to-speech once we're in this panel is go ahead and choose the option to manage accessibility features. And when you click that, that's going to expand the accessibility choices. So we can en enable the select to speak icon. And that's this box right here. Again, it's just a toggle that's normally turned off. So when you click that, it turns on this icon just to the left of the clock on the Chrome OS shelf. What this allows you to do is the computer will recognize text anywhere on screen in any of the apps that you're using with Google Chrome. So in the example on the right, I visited the Library of Congress website, the Ask a Librarian section. I wanted the computer to read this portion of the text aloud to me. I simply had to click on the Select to Speak icon down in the corner, and then click and drag a box around the text that I wanted to have read. After a second or two to process, the computer will begin speaking those contents aloud. You should know that in some apps you don't even have to do the click and drag around the selection. 
With some, you simply have to click where the text begins and the tool will read from there. It's a really nice feature built into Chromebooks. So if you have students working in a one-on-one -on -one computing situation and those are the devices they've been provided, this is an accessibility feature already available to them on that platform. If you're not using Chromebooks, certainly Macintosh and Windows computers have built-in speech as well. But sticking with some Google options and Google Chrome browser options, one of the tools that offers a number of robust features is Text Helps Read and Write for Google Chrome. They actually, um, for the last couple of years, have made the products available free for teachers to use. So this first link that you'll visit will get you to the teacher registration page. By signing on, you'll get full free access to Read and Write as well as the ability to get free access to Equatio, which is their math notation software. Another nice tool to, to take a look at. So they provide both of those for free uh, to teachers. Uh, you simply have to register through the link provided here. For student users, however, uh, subscription is required for full use of either one of those products, but the company does offer 30-day trials. The nice thing is that once the trial expires, the company does allow people to continue using the app in a limited capacity. This includes access to the text-to-speech feature and two of the highlighter colors. And we'll take a look at this in a minute. And finally, Read and Write offers an app for the iPad. It installs as an external keyboard that you can use with Google Docs or, quite frankly, anything that you type in on the computer. So speech is tied to that word prediction and you also get text reading within the document uh, from that tool. Let's uh, switch over for a second here and take a look at Read and Write for Google working with Google Docs. So here's a blank Google document. Uh, Read and Write is already running at the top of my browser window. This purple icon is what shows up on your toolbar once you've installed the, the app. And these are the read and write features. Because I'm registered as a teacher, I have access to all of these. If a uh, trial expired, the text tools here would remain, as well as the yellow and blue highlighter tools. So we simply need to type in some text. And then we can click our position and hit the play button. Today is April 21st. Or we can make a selection of a particular item or a phrase that we want to hear aloud. April. Today is that. April 21st. The next feature we'll take a look at is the speech to text tool. In Google Docs and Google Slides, they are both positioned in the same place. They're under the tools menu and available as voice typing. This allows you to simply click the microphone to begin listening to your dictated speech. And the tool will input the keyboarded information directly into the document. There is a keyboard shortcut to utilize this. Uh, that takes out the middleman, so to speak. If you use Control-Shift-S on the keyboard, it will automatically wake up the microphone and begin listening and typing your dictation. If you follow the path with your mouse, you get this gray toolbar that allows you some time before you start or stop the microphone. Taking a look at the voice typing feature, I'm going to click on the tools menu and select voice typing. As I mentioned before, the keyboard shortcuts displayed there in case you didn't remember it or didn't know it, you have that available to you there. But right now I'm going to click so we open it up in passive mode. This will work with over 120 different languages, so I'm selecting English today. So you'll see a change in state between the icon when it's actively listening, uh, it's orange, and when it's passive and ready f and waiting, it's showing up as that gray rectangle. When I'm ready to utilize the feature, I simply click my cursor to let it know where I'd like the text to be entered, and then click the microphone to begin. 
It is a beautiful, comma, but windy day here in Pittsburgh, period. Now you'll note with this tool, punctuation needs to be dictated. It, it's not at the point yet where commas and ending punctuation are inserted automatically. The other way you can use this tool is with the keyboard shortcut. So by pressing Control shift s it's automatically going to wake up the microphone. Perhaps I'll be able to get outside today, period. And again, we click then to stop the active listening of the microphone. Finally, we'll talk about some alternatives to using the pencil by making the by making documents available to students electronically. They have the ability to type, click, and use the documents with any variety of assistive features and assistive technology tools. One common feature built into all major word processors are a replace feature and an automatic correction or substitution feature. This can be very powerful for students who fatigue easily with writing, who are note taking and need to save keystrokes or pen strokes with writing. They can utilize abbreviations for repeated phrases and words and shorten the task and save the physical energy in cases where it's students who fatigue considerably from the writing or keyboarding processes. Let's switch back over to Google Docs right now and take a look at both of these features with abbreviations. This document here shows you some information I've already begun typing. When I use abbreviations I do like to make a habit of using special characters in my abbreviation. I tend to use the accent mark which is positioned just to the left of the one key at the top of the keyboard. The reason for doing this is it doesn't show up in English as a character sequence so I could use an abbreviation like accent mark IT uh, without any concern about it accidentally replacing the word IT or replacing information technologies acronym when I use that abbreviation. So that accent mark is a little bit of an insurance policy, so to speak. I also like to keep paper handy next to my computer so I can jot those abbreviations that I make up on the fly uh, down onto paper. That way I can just glance down and say, oh, that's the abbreviation I'm going to use for this particular session. So this second paragraph, abbreviations, can be useful when composing original text. Let's suppose I was writing a paragraph about abbreviations. That's what I have laid out here. So I knew that word was going to be repeating throughout. It was the topic of my paper. Rather than typing out all those individual letters each time, I opted to create this abbreviation on the fly, and I used that at various points throughout the document to replace that text, or take the place of that text. The last step then is to go ahead and do the replacement. So under the Edit menu, at the very bottom you'll find Find and Replace. Keyboard shortcut in Google Docs and in Microsoft Office products is the same. It's Control H. So either one of these options will work. And then we simply tell it what to find. In this case my abbreviation accent mark ABR and replace it with abbreviation and the second replace with box. Now because I use that special character, I can safely assume that's not showing up any place where I don't want it to be in other English words. So I can click Replace All. And what we see happen now is in that paragraph where those abbreviations repeated, we now see the full expanded word at our disposal. So that's great for writing on the fly. There are times, though, that students need to copy notes from another source, like a, a whiteboard or a textbook. So the first part of this process would be to scan what you're copying and identify those repeated words and phrases throughout this. So that's what I did here, looking at the source 
Uh, I saw George Washington, Great Britain, and the Continental Congress came up a number of times. So rather than typing those out individually each time, I went and made use of the abbreviation as I was copying those notes. Then at the end of the note-taking session, I can hit Control h and tell it to find each one of those instances. So I'll tell it, look for accent mark GW and replace it with George Washington. Replace all. Look for accent mark GB, replace that with Great Britain. Replace all. And finally look for accent mark CC and replace it with the Continental Congress. The nice thing about this is after you've used it a couple times, you can get pretty speedy with uh, using that keyboard shortcut. It allowed me to save considerable time and effort in typing out those full phrases, but at the end I end up with fully recognizable and understandable text. I remember back to my college days, I would sometimes make abbreviations and handwritten notes and if I forgot to write down what that abbreviation was, sometimes I was left scratching my head three weeks later trying to figure out what it was that I, I wrote down. That's a tool, like I said, built into all word processors. So usually it's found in the edit menu or on the edit ribbon in your different tools and uh, certainly something you can begin using right away. The last class of tools we'll take a look at are some supports for annotating PDF documents. When documents are shared electronically with students in PDF format, sometimes people wonder, well, how can I complete this work and submit it back to my teacher? And uh, while in some cases people will actually print those out, do the work, scan them in, and send them back, it's not necessary to go through those steps. We can keep the electronic document electronic and work with it that way. There's actually a couple different options available to us to do that. One is the use of Adobe Acrobat Reader. This link will take you to a tip sheet to walk you through the steps of annotating with the free application from Adobe. It will give you the ability to type onto a PDF document, draw lines, draw boxes and circles. Uh, if there's selectable text in the PDF, you can also highlight things with the highlighter tools. So pretty much anything you can do with paper and pencil, you can use the free Adobe Acrobat Reader to, to mark up your PDF documents. On the Google platform, there's a couple of apps available. The one I've included here is an app called Kami that runs as a Google extension. And then Claro PDF Pro is an option for the iPad environment. Similar to what I talked about in Adobe Acrobat Reader, both of those products allow you to import a PDF document, mark it up, and share it with others. Let's return quickly to Google Docs and, or Google Drive and take a look at this particular feature in action. So this is the bit.ly site that I directed to you to earlier. So I'm going to come into additional resources and webinars and find today's folder. So here I've got the PDF version of the handout, the slide deck. So I'm just going to open that. Now normally in Drive, unless you've configured it to work differently, you're going to be taken to this preview window, window with PDF documents. And at the top center is an Open With drop-down box. Once you've installed Kami, uh, Annotate with Kami is going to come available in this drop-down. So I'm going to choose that to tell it that's how I want to work with this particular PDF document. This sometimes takes a few seconds for the page to load, so be patient. Like Text Help and their Read and Write software, this company offers a trial period with their software that expires after a period of time. Also, like the other product I mentioned, though, this one does allow you to continue using certain features even once the trial expires. So you see here the premium features are locked out on my account because I haven't signed up for a subscription yet. 
but I still have the ability to do text box markup and drawing with uh, a freehand tool or a variety of shapes. So this would allow me to click on the text box, choose a color for the text that I'd like to type, and then simply click to enter my name at the top of a document. You'll notice across the top, once I clicked, it's given me additional formatting options for that text box. If uh, the requirements of the worksheet, test, or document required us to circle things on the document or underline things, the Shapes tool has a variety of features available to you. So we could choose the Line tool to underline the title in a paragraph to match items in a matching column or to do any of the other f things we would do with paper and pencil on a uh, traditional format of material. I hope this session was helpful. Again, you can get a full copy of the slide deck and other resources at Skip's Quick Tips, the Google Drive we just took a look at. There are also YouTube videos available at my YouTube channel. If you go to bit.ly forward slash skips quick videos or clicking on this link you'll be able to see those. Uh, they are short three to seven minute videos in most cases walking you through particular features or apps. Have a great day.